I've got a roof over my head. I've got food for my big belly. I got drinks and smokes and smoke. I've got clothes to keep the hold off of my bones. I lose my gloves.
Now what? This is just all of them to yeah. something. All of them are hunters of a sort. Well, uh, they're they're the the sort of this hunter. That oh. is, they're they're oh. the type of this hunter. Those in the world with appearances of uh, of martial and strong, uh -huh. you know, the doers, um, but don't carry them out to fruition. All are like this hunter. Right. Exactly. skills educator at the juvenile detention center. I run the computer lab program there so and that's an incentive program for kids uh, to behave because they don't get to go to the computer lab unless uh, they're meeting their behavioral and academic requirements on the unit um, that they're housed in. <laughs> Well, I think the most important thing is, is to give them an experience of playing music, of taking part in the music making process. One, two, three, four. Very good, very good. And that's rhythm for you guys. Let's give Group C a round of applause. Woo! The musically enriched.
enriched learning environment is a concept I created. Uh, it, it's basically providing music time to kids uh, based on their behavior or based on, it could be, you know, we do it for behavior, but it could be based on any kind of academic requirement. Like every school should have a set that one or two classes at a time can play together, 30, 60 kids. I mean, preferably every kid at once, but like now I have it where every kid has a drum and I keep the drum set up and the kids learn the same thing. Every class, the same lesson, the same what we do, uh, except that the older kids do harder things. <laughs> The whole point is that it's something that they enjoy intrinsically. And then I do a little call and response where they uh, will echo me. I call it the echo game. I haven't met a kid who wasn't interested in creating their own music to some degree, or at least putzing around on the thing, or perhaps um, helping someone else who's doing that, or just being in the room when it's going on. That's considered a, re a reward. It's incentive enough. Kids want to be there just to be in the musically enriched learning environment. They just want to be there. That's a good thing that every school should have. Like, instead of the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, like drum jam in the morning. <laughs> but this music program that we're talking about is not a performance based music program. We're not learning songs to go perform for people. Um, the music is just there to be enjoyed by the people there who are there for reasons far more important. Um, you know, they're in trouble and their their behavior is often um, you know antisocial. Uh, the program that I'm a part of is, a, is an, a part of overall detention reform, the Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative, and it's sponsored by the Casey Foundation. And Portland and Sacramento and Chicago are three cities that the Casey Foundation initiated these reforms in. Oh, I meet the, the guidelines, the standards. Sure. Recidivism has been reduced as a result of these overall initiatives and the musically enriched learning environment in, in place at the Juvenile Detention Center is a part of, uh, it's just a part of that. More formally trained in uh, a South Indian drum called Murdungo. And uh, the, the different patterns and the hand technique could be put onto other drums because the rhythmic training is done verbally, uh, orally. Uh, so you learn it first, so you internalize it. So uh, a lesson might be ta din din na ta ka din din na ta din din na ta ka din din na ta din din na ta ka din din na ta ka jong a tong ta ka jong a tong ta ka jong a tong. And you have to learn that, recite it with what they call keeping tala, keeping the rhythmic cycle, uh, hand claps. So the lesson could be given just by saying it, and we will also talk about the combination, the hand strokes, and even how you say it when your voice goes up, that means without your left hand. So like the phrase, ta din din na, ta ka din din na, ta din din na, that's without your left hand. So ta din din na, ta ka din din na, ta din din na. I frowned on people that use samples. If it's going to make a kid happy and smile, you know, and light up and change their behavior and help them, you know, help them be prepared to learn, use that as a tool. You know? Now we take samples from speeches and history and lay those out to beats. You know, instead of just listening to a speech on the Cuban Missile Crisis or having the kids read a report on it, for instance. You can go get the speech and set it to a hip-hop beat and all those kids are loving the Cuban Missile Crisis now. They think it was an exciting time, you know. There's also just the process. The fact that someone's willing to help them with something that they're guiding, that they want to do, that they actually want to do. Um, <clears throat> it's a shame that that should be something new. 
we don't ask kids what they want to learn till they go to college. Really, what do you want to do now? We've been saying that you have to learn this. Well, you know, in music, uh, it's just come in and create what you think sounds cool, and it's amazing the diversity, really. Um, cool bar, Srinivasan. Uh, he's a great uh, Murdungist, Murdungan player, um, from like a long lineage of, his father was a great player, teacher, and so he's considered to be like, along this lineage of musicians. And Ready position? Rest position. You know that there's no H in the musical alphabet?